In this section, we're going to discuss the reactions of alkenes. We're going to start by looking at the reactions of alkenes in a general sense, and then we will look at many of the specific reactions that alkenes do with specific reagents. Most reactions of carbon-carbon pi bonds, in other words alkenes, involve addition of two things, an electrophile paired with a nucleophile. This can be represented in a general sense by this reaction diagram, where we start with an alkene, we have an electrophile and a nucleophile paired up as the reagent. And in the course of the reaction, the double bond is converted to a single bond. And we add, uh, make a bond from one of the carbons of the double bond to the electrophile, and then the nucleophile makes a bond to the other carbon. So we end up with this. This is called an addition reaction because we are adding atoms to the formula of the reactant. Electrophiles are species that have a full or partial positive charge, and they are attracted to electrons. So they are sort of the complement of nucleophiles. We're going to use electrophiles on many occasions throughout the rest of the course. There's a general mechanism for many of the uh, alkene addition reactions. It looks something like this. In the first step of the mechanism, the carbon-carbon pi bond is attracted to and makes a bond to the electrophile. This occurs because in the region of the pi bond, we have a high density of electrons we say that it is electron rich. The reason for this is that compared to a typical bond between two atoms, which usually has two electrons in between the two atoms, in a pi bond we have four electrons in between the atoms. Now, when the pi bond makes a bond to the electrophile, it no longer can function as a double bond, so we lose a bond between the two atoms. And that bond is uh, converted into a bond to the electrophile. So the electrophile becomes attached to one of the carbons. But the other carbon of the double bond now will have only three bonds to it, which will make it a carbocation. Because there is a carbocation rear, uh, intermediate in this reaction, we can see rearrangement. The second step then looks a lot like the second step of an SN1 reaction. We formed a carbocation, that would be our alpha carbon, and the nucleophile is attracted to the positive charge on that carbon and uses a pair of electrons to make a bond. That creates this species. Like most of the mechanisms that we will discuss and have discussed, this mechanism can be written on one line. It looks like this. Start with the alkene, make a bond to the electrophile, which forms a carbocation. Then have the nucleophile react with the carbocation and form the product. One important thing to notice is that nucleophiles will not react directly with most carbon-carbon pi bonds. The reason for this is that, as we mentioned, the carbon-carbon pi bond is an area of high electron density. Nucleophiles use electrons to react. As the electron cloud of the nucleophile approaches the pi cloud of the carbon-carbon bond, the electrons in the two clouds repel each other. So the nucleophile, instead of forming a bond to one of the atoms with the pi bond, is instead pushed away and cannot react. The result of this is that in these reactions, the, the electrophile must always react first.
these addition reactions also have a rather complex stereochemistry. There are a couple possible ways in which the electrophile nucleophile pair can add to the pi bond. If we look at a carbon carbon pi bond, both of the carbons are trigonal planar. So therefore, the carbon carbon pi bond itself is planar. It has what we call two faces. If we look at it from the side, there would be a face above the plane of the pi bond and all of its uh, attached substituents, and there would be a face below. If we then imagine the nucleophile electrophile pair adding from either the top and or the bottom, we can see that there are two possible combinations in which they can add. In the first one, the electrophile and the nucleophile both add to the same face of the alkene. They come from the same direction. If we look at this example then, we would see that as the electrophile adds to this carbon, in this case from the top face, there would be a, an electron pair created as part of the bond to the electrophile. That would repel the two groups that were already attached to the alkene down away from it as it formed a tetrahedral carbon. Similarly, if the nucleophile adds on the top from the top face, same direction as the electrophile, it would also create an electron pair in the top face area, and that would push the other two substituents down. So we would end up with a stereoisomer that looked like this. When the electrophile and nucleophile add from the same phase, we call that syn addition. It is also possible that the electrophile and nucleophile add to opposite faces of the alkene. That would look something like this. The electrophile would approach from the top. A new bond would be formed on the top face, on the left-hand carbon, for example and that would repel the two already existing groups down away. The nucleophile would approach from the opposite face, in this case the bottom. That would make a new bond formed on the bottom face, and these two substituents would be repelled up away from that. So this is the product that we get. This is called anti-addition. If you look, the electrophile and nucleophile are essentially in an anti-relationship to each other. When we look at all of the various reactions of alkenes, we will see that some addition reactions will be stereoselective. What that means is that there will be some reactions which will prefer only syn or only anti-addition. In other words, selecting one of the two stereochemical possibilities. Other addition reactions will not be stereoselective. In that case, we will see both syn and anti-stereoisomers formed of the products. Alkenes are planar, and either type of addition can occur from either face. So for example, we looked at syn addition from the top face, but we could also do syn addition from the bottom face. What that would produce is a pair of enantiomers, or let's say a pair of mirror image configurations at the reacting carbons. These will be enantiomers if there are no other stereocenters in the molecule, and if chiral molecules are formed. Let's look at an example with a specific molecule just to see how this might work. Let's imagine that we have this. This is cis-2-butene. I need to edit these notes. This is actually in the old IUPAC. As we learned it, it should be cis-butene. We are looking at it from a side view. 
Two of the substituents, when we look at it in the side view, will be pointing out toward us, and two of the substituents will be pointing back away from us, and all of these will be in a plane. This would be the top face, this would be the bottom face. Now imagine that we add an electrophile and a nucleophile in a syn stereochemistry. We could either add them syn from the top, which would produce this molecule, or syn from the bottom, which would produce this structure. If we then convert these to Fischer projections, we would get this. And by comparing these Fischer projections, you can see very clearly that these would be mirror images of each other, and furthermore, they would not be superposable. So these would be enantiomers. Anti-addition on the same molecule would also produce a pair of enantiomers. We would add, for example, the electrophile from the top and the nucleophile from the bottom, producing this molecule, which then, if we converted to a Fischer projection, would have this structure. We could also add the electrophile from the bottom and the nucleophile from the top, producing this molecule, which would have this Fischer projection. And again, comparing these two Fischer projections, these two Fischer projections are mirror images that are not superposable, therefore they are enantiomers. If we then compare molecules from the syn addition, stereoisomers from the syn addition with stereoisomers from the anti-addition, using the Fischer projection, it should be very clear that comparing these two molecules, some of the stereocenters have the opposite configuration, whereas others have the same configuration, which makes them not perfect mirror images, and they are also not superposable. So, the syn stereoisomers and the anti-stereoisomers would be diastereomers of each other. 